Today I want to tell you a story about how I just absolutely failed. So this summer I traveled a lot. Um, I probably was gone from my house more than I was at my house. And I know I've talked about this before, but I find it incredibly difficult to write when I am not at home. But I thought to myself, it doesn't matter. My rhythms and routines are really good. And when I get back, I'm going to be able to plug straight into my writing. Take a guess how successful I was at doing that. The answer is not at all. Uh, I got home and I just couldn't write. It's hard to describe just how frustrating that is, though I'm sure that if you're a writer, you've experienced periods like this too. And what was worse about it is that I felt like I should be able to write. There was no reason that I shouldn't be able to write. There was nothing that was stopping me from writing. I had access to my office. I had the time. I knew what I was supposed to write in terms of story. Everything was set up for me to succeed. And yet, I just failed. I didn't write. I got back at the beginning of September, and it wasn't until yesterday, halfway through the month, that I actually started writing for real. Now, I, I wasn't complete failure. I did write some last week. The week before that, though, the week that I got back, I got almost nothing done when it comes to writing. So this got me thinking about the concept of resistance. In Stephen Pressfield's book, The War of Art, he talks a lot about resistance, this, this ethereal force that acts sort of in opposite to the muse, right? In uh, the classics, the muse is the force that brings creative expression to someone. It's, it's the inspiration behind any creative project. And resistance is the opposite of that. It's the devil sitting on the other shoulder, telling you that you're not good enough, telling you that you shouldn't be writing, telling you that nobody wants to read what you're trying to create, telling you that there's something else more interesting if you'll only turn your head away. It promises that we'll have more fun if we do something else, or that things will be easier if we just don't write. But in reality, it's never true. Sure, not writing is often the easier thing in the moment, but in the long term, we almost always come to regret not doing the work. Resistance is, at its core, a battle with self. And over the last two weeks, I feel like I have been on the losing end of that battle. Very slowly, though, I'm starting to recover. Very slowly, I'm starting to get back into a regular rhythm. Very slowly, I'm starting to ignore the resistance. It's still there. It's still telling me to do other things. It's still trying to pull my attention away. But I'm fighting back. Throughout my entire writing career, I've dealt with resistance. For the first 35 years of my life, I dealt with resistance on a massive scale. But I've learned a little bit about myself, I've learned a little bit about this devil, and I've learned a bit about how to fight against it. So hopefully some of this will be helpful for you. There are three stages to battling resistance. The first is acceptance. You have to accept that you're feeling it, you have to accept that this is the state you're in, you have to accept why you're feeling the resistance. So often, I try to ignore things or I try to uh, downplay things in my life that I should really be dealing with. Whether they're small things, like my environment being too chaotic for me to work properly, or whether they're big things, like recently, a friend of mine passed away. Regardless, I have to accept that I am in the state I am in. I think that there's a tendency to live in denial just of really small things because we want life to be a certain way. And when it's not that way, we start to find ourselves frustrated, find ourselves upset. And it's easier to ignore problems than it is to actually deal with them. 
one of the things about resistance is that it is constantly tempting us to take what appears to be the easy road. Almost always, in the long run, it's not, but it appears to be. The second thing that's super important for battling resistance is understanding. It's understanding not only why resistance is happening, but it's also understanding how you get out of it. See, resistance is a powerful force, but it's not unbeatable. It's not something that we can't get past or get over. In fact, resistance can even be helpful to us if we understand it and learn to control it. And how do we control it? Through action, through taking what appears to be the hard road and through doing. Ultimately, resistance is our brain's way of saying, hey, this thing seems difficult. I don't wanna do that. I wanna do something easier. Creativity is tremendously hard. Writing is difficult at a baseline. I'm sure you've experienced these wonderful periods where words just seem to flow endlessly, but then those periods end and so do the words. Resistance tells us that unless we're in that perfect state of inspiration, unless we have been attacked by the muse, it's not even worth trying. But that's wrong. Completely 100% dead wrong. No, the best time to write is when it's hard. The best time to write is when it feels like you're slogging your way uphill in the snow four hours. And the reason that's the best time to write is because it makes all your other writing seem easy. By building a habit of ignoring resistance, of pushing through and doing the hard work, we start to see the fruit of our creativity. The week after I got back from my travels, I didn't write practically at all. Last week, I wrote a lot less than I wanted to. I had these grand aspirations and I failed. Resistance was too strong. But you know what's fascinating? I showed up every day and I tried. I sat down in my computer and I tried writing. And what was amazing is though I felt like I didn't get anything done that whole week, when I got to the end of the week and I looked back at how many words I had written, I was astonished to see just how productive I had been. See, resistance warps our view of the world. It warps our perception of ourself, of our writing, of everything. It tells us that we're not doing a good job. It tells us that we might as well quit. It tells us that there really isn't a point to what we're doing. But it's also a liar. And it'll lie to us every chance it gets. So if you're feeling resistance, if you have a creative project you want to pursue, or maybe you're trying to write something, and you're feeling a lot of resistance every time you sit down and try to do it, a lot of distraction pulling your attention other ways, I want to encourage you because there is no replacement for simply doing the work.